Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Skluder.io tutorial series. This is part six, and today we're going to be working on the special food, the flying, floating, white little dot that gives you a lot more length than the regular food. Um, so, so far, let's check out what we have. We have uh, a snake that moves and collect food that is repopulated, um, and some really cool animations effect on both the food and the snake, and the snake uh, body. So uh, let's hide some of these uh, variables first, just because they're getting a little bit cluttered. So we can hide everything except for length. So I'll go and enable that once again. Um, and like I said, this little jitteriness, don't worry about that. We're going to fix that in a future episode. So in order to create this new special food sprite, we're going to paint something new, uh, upload a costume. And again, I have linked all these in the description below. So you can go and collect yours. Uh, white food, that's what I've called it here. And as you can see, it's just a gradient uh, white dot. So how do we actually code this? It's going to be very similar to our regular food sprite. So uh, we're going to start with creating two new for this sprite only variables. We'll call this clone x, just like we did in the other food, and clone y. And make sure both these are for this sprite only. That's super important. So just like last time, let's start off by just repeating 10 times, creating a clone of myself. Uh, and then we'll bring in this one I start as clone. So in our looks, let us hide our original spawner clone and then show all of the actual clones. Before that, before we do that, we want to set up our clone X and clone Y. So here we're going to say set clone X to pick random number, and we're gonna do negative 720 to 720. Trust me with these numbers for right now, they will make sense later on in the series. So for clone Y, it's gonna be something similar. It's gonna be negative 540 by 500, uh, by positive 540. So pick a random number from there. Then we can show, uh, and here we can do a forever, and go to, and then as you may expect, we're gonna grab those two new variables, clone X and clone Y that are for the sprite only. Uh, but we actually need to keep it relative to the player position. And if you don't understand what that means, do not worry, just follow along. But basically, we're going to have clone X minus our cam camera X, which we abbreviated as cam X. Uh, we can duplicate this. We will do clone Y, and I did that by right clicking, minus cam Y. And we can fit both of these in the positions right here. So now if we take a look, we have these that are spawned like regular. However, if a food, uh, if our floating food, for example, is not in um, our stage, then it gets cut to the border like these up here, as you can see. So in order to fix that, we can use a little hack that we used last time as well, which is set size to 400 and set size to 100 after you have done the go to. Um, and so now the ones that are beyond our stage, our field of view are hidden. So now let's handle some random movement because these are floating white dots and they need to have some randomness so uh, it's a little bit harder to get. So we're gonna say when I start as clone, let's see where's that, at the bottom of control, we're going to drag in a forever loop. And before we do that, let's set our direction to something random. So we will say pick a random number from negative 180 to, whoops, negative 180 to 180 to positive 180. So that gives us a random direction to start with. Uh, then we want to constantly be updating this direction, right? So we're gonna say turn right, and we can change this to negative 20 to 20, whoops. And as you can see, nothing actually happens because although they are rotating, they're not moving with that new direction. So like we did with our snake, we need to translate that direction into some change in, in our X and our Y. Again, just follow along if that's not making sense. Uh, go into variables, change clone X by, and it's gonna look similar, although it's gonna be slightly different. We're gonna bring in a multiplication sign. Uh, this is gonna be a five, and that's gonna be our speed. Um, and we're going to drag in this ABS of. And for our clone X, we want it to be cosine, so COS uh, of our direction. So let's go into motion and grab that circular block. We can duplicate this and do the same for our clone Y, except this time changing that cosine into sine. So now if we take a look, let's see if this works. As you can see, we have floating food that go around the map and they're not colliding with our snakes yet because we'll have to add that logic. But you can see there's this randomness to them that makes them hard to get. So I think that's pretty cool. All right, 
And so we need to handle that collision with a snake, right? So if a snake eats one, we actually want it to work. So let's see if I can grab this. They're pretty fast, so I can't. But if I did, we would want it so that it would gain some length on our snake. So it's going to look pretty similar once again. We can actually go into our sprite 2 and just drag this and bring it into our sprite 3. So this is the block that we care about. And it's going to be very similar. So if touching sprite 1, repeat 3 times, change size by negative 20. Uh, this time, we don't want to change food count by negative 1 because that was for our regular food. But we actually want to change length by 5 because it's a bigger reward for chasing. So now, as you can see, if I go and collect these little dots, um, I gain some more length. And you can see they're a little hard to get, which makes this really fun to chase them. Uh, but now that collision is working. So that's all I'm going to do this episode. We're going to join the next episode with repopulating special food and some other co cool effects and a boundary system. So yeah, get excited for that. I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Peace.